Okay. This is the top slide. We want to show this. This nut and lock washer holds this on. Okay, I looked in the drawing. This piece goes on here. There is a pin in the shaft, so there's a slot in here. Okay. This screw holds what I would think is a sleeve. That's really not that detailed on the instructions on that. I did take it out and spray some stuff in there. The hole does not go all the way through. So I'm thinking it's like the other one. There is a sleeve in there. But it allowed this piece to go back and forth, the shaft, to get oil in here. This is the oil I have. This is like for band instruments. Not to show any brand names. That's what I got in there. I had to put some kind of oil in there. Okay, I may have to get some Loctite for this nut because if you tighten this nut up too tight on that lock washer, this gets very stiff to use. You won't sit here and do this. You will not do that. I'm not going to do it on camera because I have it set just right. But I get, took pictures of this. Now this goes on, which direction it goes on. So I really can't tell you right now. I'll look at my drawing. In my pictures, if you see this little screwdriver pointing towards anything, there's a burr on here. And that burr is going to affect how this works. The shim only goes in one way. See how the holes are all set? It only goes in one way. Here is what this screw goes in. Okay. And it rides in here. And I did mark the top of it with an X. I knew what the top was. So I did mark that. I did take off the little pointer thing that goes over here just so I didn't bend it up or nothing. But this also has your screws to adjust the shim. I will put oil in there before I adjust it so it has a coat of oil. I may be looking for some real quality super slippery oil. There was so much black up in here with that brown oil it was just like this was machined was not washed and all that black dust just like you get off steel cast iron you know what that dust looks like mixed in with that brown icky stinky oil just like I'll show this part again see that gooey stuff where it's dried in the air I would not have run this lathe with that junk in there. We will scrub all the paint out of here. We we'll use a scotch pad or something. We won't use sandpaper. Uh, you have your shim that goes down in this with the two screws. I have that marked with my carbide scratch all, whatever you call it. This is a your cock swab. I just want to show how filthy that is. See how black and filthy that is? That's the junk that's been coming out of here. Okay. So, it's just me. I'm not picky. I like to have my stuff clean properly. I would not take apart transmission in a car or something or do anything detail and leave gunk in there like that. Okay. So, we don't know exactly how this goes on right now till we put the piece on there. But, if this does not slide back and forth real easy we know we'll have these screws too tight but we'll have oil in there here's where your lathe bit goes so this will all be if it does not slide very easily we will do something about that this I might have mentioned earlier I thought it was a little bit of a slag or defect in machining or casting it that is the screw I may have to get Loctite, like I said. I may have to get the right kind of Loctite. I can't remember the types till I read the bottle. I want some Loctite that in case it has to come off again. And it will just be cleaned up with alcohol, denatured alcohol or something, so there's no oil on threads. A little bit of Loctite, put the nut on there, so it stays where I want it. Because there's really no wobbling here. The wobbling here is just because this screw was going in there so long. There's a small amount of wobble in this. It's been a grungy, messy, dirty job for something this small. But back to work. We get it all done. We'll show how fast it'll spin back and forth. This one is all done. This is your cross feed. 
would go this way in and out. I forget my X and my Y and my Z. Somebody comment and tell me. Us beginners here. I think X is in and out. Y is. I know Z is up, I'm sure. Let's see how bad I am at that. If anybody knows more about this than me, because I'm just starting to learn. But at least I researched enough and watched some of the lays out there, a couple of videos, where they have instructed to tear them apart, clean them, look for little burrs, defects, put the proper oil in them, not that gooey junk. This sets like this, actually, because then your top goes on. So this is how this sets. So it's kind of odd how this lathe works. This will be going down. Say you had a shaft in there, your lathe going along. It will go this way. It looks like there's not much room for the tailstock, but the time you spread the tailstock out and stuff, there is. And if you're working on something with the tailstock out of the way, well, then that's all the better. And of course, you can do your tapers. I think this will be a lot easier to make tapers on something, uh, like a first project of a plumb bob to put a taper. It either goes this way, or <clears throat> you can take this off, flip it over here, and go whatever direction you want. So, making a taper, you could pull your bit from the end down, or push it forward. So, this can go on either way. You just take it off and move it. Uh, you could actually go like this. You could have this setting. I find the hole. You can have it setting like this on the lathe. Over on the opposite side. I have not seen any instructional videos on this type of lathe. There is one out there. If you look up SIG, whether it's SEI or SI, EG, uh, when some of my videos are over, you'll see it out there. It's like a factory SIG51.com or something. You'll see a video of the mill being used and the lathe being used. The machine is red. And it is an older video. But I think there's quite a few possibilities with this little lathe. Because you can have this here or here flipped over to the other side like I showed. But we'll get back to work. So this is not a real long video. This is that oil I'm using. It really leaves a film though. I put some on a piece of stainless steel. Let it set overnight and let it run off, and it left a really nice film on it. So, as far as these parts, but I did put oil down there. I will put oil on the screws. I'm not going to rely just on that spray. This is a little stiff. I have adjusted it over and over. I'm not really going to adjust it until it's on the lay solid to make sure there's no play in here because you can't really do it in your hand. Just like in instructions, it tells you how to adjust this part. You will lay down something. You'll take your micrometer and check it. You'll be able to tell whether this is off or this where the pointer is. They want you to put this pointer. They want you to put a mark on there. I really don't want to put a mark yet. I'll probably put a sharpie mark on here. I really don't want to mark the center punch down in here. Let's get this back on here. I really don't want a center punch mark on here. This stuff's so slippery. I really don't want a center punch mark up there yet. I'll go with a sharpie. I do have to go pick up a tri square. Your little square, you'll see where it's real thick. You have your blade in a real thick part. So what it sets on this is perfectly squared. Then go from there as far as adjusting this piece. You have to have this squared before you would adjust this part. So it'll take time. We'll get back to work, and this is probably the last video, um, part of the video of me talking, so thanks for watching. Okay, we're not done yet, but this is the advantage of cleaning up stuff and putting better oil in it. This is a little stiff. That you don't advance as fast. There you go. It is kind of tight if you notice over here. You get near the tailstock. You can always extend your bit out a little bit. I may make a custom knob for this. This thing's kind of awkward for me. 
That's the advantage of taking this all apart and cleaning it. it moves smooth like it's supposed to. So that went past center. There's a lot more room than it looks like. That'd be a piece of about half its diameter you're working on. Kind of optical illusion, but that's a whatever socket stuck in there, 10 millimeter, whatever the outside is. I do have a socket stuck in there because I didn't want to spin it with the chuck all the way down. I was listening to the motor and doing all that. There we go, that just went over center, or over the edge, I mean. Yeah, do the thing. Trying to look through the camera. Be kind of dangerous for me to be making a video of lathing trying to look through the camera, but that's the advantage. I still don't have the thing under here. It does make it a little shaky. Okay, that's enough of that. This is still a little gummy feeling. I'm sure it'll wear in in time. Even though it's oiled. It just doesn't have a smooth action, but this doesn't feed in as fast. That's when you feed in. This is your one that you're going to really be a top slide. They call this the cross slide, I'm sure in the book it's called top slide. Just don't have a carriage. You just move it wherever you want, wherever you're working. I've got the handle on the back. I don't know how the instructions had it, but I got the handle on the back here, like this handle. I have it on the back. I want it out of my way. So you can work up closer. Okay. I guess that takes care of it. I think this is the end of part two if I can fit it all in two of them. But thank you for watching. Stay tuned. We'll have this all done yet. We still have to take this part, oil it, and service and clean all of it. We want our own oil in that thing. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching.